Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp, and I have with me uh, two guests tonight. Rich here is uh, up in the Upper Peninsula today, and so uh, we have with us uh, Derek Marshall, who's been on our show uh, with us uh, a few times, and then we have Sue Langham here with us, who is already, uh, uh, she went with us uh, to the Ark Encounter uh, this, this past week, and uh, we came back from that, and. Uh, we're going to have a little comment about our visit to the Ark Encounter, but the reason that we're uh, going to be talking about this is there's a topic that Derek wants to talk about, which is the you know, how long did it take for the builders of the of Noah's Ark to uh, actually finish the project? And so there's been a number of different uh, ideas about that, and uh, uh, with uh, Derek's knowledge of engineering and uh, how things work, back then, we're going to discuss that aspect of it. But uh, first I wanted to get a little bit of our, uh, our impressions of the Ark Encounter, which is a museum in Kentucky, Williamstown, Kentucky. And uh, it's just a little bit south of Cincinnati. And uh, so I'm gonna introduce you to you uh, Sue Langham, and I'm gonna have her give you a, a few of her impressions of what the Ark Encounter was like. Well, I really enjoyed the vacation with you. Um, my husband also enjoyed it. Um, the first thing, of course, we saw was the ark itself, mm -hmm. which was obviously huge. And, of course, some pictures were taken, some beautiful spots to take photographs. When you went inside the ark, you could see how the internal structure had been made to house the animals, to feed the animals, to water the animals. And through the tour, you were able to see the living quarters for the people, for Noah and his family. Um, I really enjoyed all the different dinosaurs that I saw because they were bringing younger, smaller dinosaurs in and they had made an artistic um, design of those dinosaurs. So that was kind of the first thing I saw after I got inside. Yeah, I think um, what really was interesting about that is that they are, they're doing quite a bit of research on what a kind is, mm. uh, a biblical kind. And, uh, and so they're depicting what they thought of Noah might have brought on the ark from which all uh, living species descended from. And we have to distinguish a kind from a species because kind is probably at the family level. Yes. But um, uh, what else did you find interesting? Um, what I also saw as being interesting was um, the day before we had gone to the museum and we had museum. Creation Museum and we, I heard Georgia Purdue talk and kind of set the stage for some of what I saw at the Ark and it helped it, helped it to stand out. Um, one of the things was um, the actual storybooks that have been made for children for Noah's and the Flood and it was depicted as a fairy tale right. and it really, yes. it really hit home with me that if the children think it's just a fairy tale, something like the Tooth Fairy, yes. then when they get older, they might believe that it's a myth, and that's what she that's brought an up. Point. And they had an, a they had an area where they had a place where all these books were laid out that were being sold in the bookstores. And one of the... Not um, in the art bookstore. They were sold no, in the other, you know, in, in the... Um, say Bible books. Yeah, in other, in out in the marketplace Barnes in, in <laughs> America. Yeah. And one of the things I also saw that hit home, it was a sign, a poster, something they created. It wasn't really a poster, but it's artistically designed. And it said, if I can convince you that the flood was not real, then I can convince you that heaven and hell are not real. Absolutely. And that just brought some things together for me in that we need to realize the truth of creation, the truth of the ark, that it really existed, yes. that there was a worldwide flood. Now, my major in college was astrophysics, physics teaching. And I thought it was interesting, one of the pieces that they had on display was about scientists believing that Mars had been impacted by a global flood. Yet, 
why is it so many scientists have trouble believing that the earth had a global flood and of course in the ark itself they had different um, presentations they talked about the accuracy of the Bible which I was impressed with they had a couple of videos about Noah um, and that was really interesting the actors were great one was an interview of Noah so as he was building the ark and another video was kind of a modern day video with the same actors but they did a great job with um, interviewing how the ark was actually reconstructed so those were the highlights to me of the uh, visit I would recommend it to everybody um, public schools private schools families, individuals. It is a great experience. It was very easy to move through the ark. The layout was, I thought, fantastic. You were able to cover it in one day comfortably. Wow. And for children that love live animals, they had a number of them outside. They had and emus. They had you could ride a camel. It was exciting. And I was really impressed to see a number of teenagers and 20-somethings there. This is, this is the largest wood frame structure in the world. And so you get a, a sense of what the ark was actually capable of doing. Now, I, we have uh, Derek here who yes. is going to uh, give us a little bit of an idea of what uh, his impression of uh, how long it might have take, taken uh, the crew at Noah's day build the ark and I understand that when they built the replica in Williamstown Kentucky they actually you know, tried to you know, do simulate some of that when they were uh, building it with the, the construction crew here yeah. and so it's kind of a uh, interesting uh, thing that uh, Derek's going to share with us yeah and uh, they did it like that and online if you research into it further um, it only took them about two years to build that arc replica. So um, when I was uh, in high school, I was uh, brought up to believe that uh, the prevailing idea at the time was the arc took on the order of 100 years up to 120 years to, uh, to make. And uh, that's been the prevailing idea for a long time. Um, the idea <coughs> Uh, that that stems from is the idea that God is going to strive with man, uh, Genesis 6-3, for 120 years. So that's the, uh, and uh, according to 1 Peter 3-20, that was kind of like the starting of this striving with man. So while um, 1 Peter 3-20 says that um, the ark was going to be uh, prepared, or the ark was being prepared during this time that the ark was being prepared, that God was striving with man, um, it also kind of uh, the idea of 120 years uh, paints a picture of this single man mm -hmm. um, with ancient hand tools <laughs> building this gargantuan structure all by himself. Uh, 120 years seems to be like a good amount of time that everybody can be happy with. But uh, over time, and especially with my own personal research, with uh, uh, if you've seen the show pr uh, previously. Um, uh, with my uh, research of the first uh, the seven day creation and some of my arc research, I, I uh, have a problem with the uh, with the t with the 120 years or even the 100 year timeline for a couple different reasons, and uh, one of them is the actual timeline that the Bible literally says. And first of all, I want to state that the Bible just does not say how long it took. So there's a lot of people that seem really sure about how long it took, and. Uh, you can, we cannot be 100% sure because the Bible does not explicitly say how long it took. Um, there's, there's different ways we can figure it out. And uh, I have the prevailing idea. I have a couple ideas from the, uh, the top research groups of creation science, creation research. And then I have my own uh, idea for my own personal research. So that's basically what I'm going to be going through yeah, today. Great. Um, the problem I have with the 100 years or the 120 years is that... Um, Hebrews 11.7. Now, now, Noah was one of the uh, heroes of faith. He was one of the, uh, the superpowers of faith. And Hebrews 11 uh, talks about many different people in the Bible that had great faith. And Noah was one of them. Mm -hmm. And you have a man with great faith that in Hebrews, Hebrews 7 says that Noah moved with fear. So to me, 
building something over the course of 100 years or 120 years is not moving with fear, first of all. That, that doesn't strike yeah, me he, as somebody has... He was in a little bit of a right, hurry. Because Noah, Noah did not know when... When God gave the instructions for the ark, Noah did not know when the flood was coming. That wasn't part of the information. Um, God gave very explicit instructions, uh, Noah, numerical Noah. instruction. Noah, Noah did not Noah, <laughs> first of all. Yeah. And then uh, another problem I have with this idea is if you look at other destructions that, that God did, for example, Sodom and Gomorrah, there's kind of a pattern of, of how he does things. He'll strive. And he's long-suffering. He's a long-suffering God. He'll strive with man. He'll strive. But when he comes down to investigate for himself, and there's always a verse or a point of time when he has came down to look at it for himself, he always acts within a matter of days. And, uh, and that's not really consistent with 120 years of when God has made up his mind, Noah, go ahead and build the ark, and that being another 100 or, or tens or decades of years. Usually God, when he makes up his mind to do something, it's within a matter of days. And uh, the, there's another uh, problem I have, and this is, to me, it's a big problem, because um, Hebrews 11 also says that Noah condemned the earth by building the ark. Now, that may seem like a very generic statement, but in my research, I see that the, no, the ark was built piece by piece from the seven-day creation. So as, as Noah was building the ark, he was actually taking the best parts of the earth because that's what he's storing up so it can be replicated when the ark is replanted into the, the post-flood earth. He's taking the best parts out of the earth. So he's actually degrading the earth as he's building the ark. So when the ark is complete, the earth is, is degraded of its, of its, like say, precious metals and precious, uh, precious parts. So the earth was condemned, just like a condemned building. You, you gut it out. You rip out all the good stuff when you condemn a building. So the earth was condemned, went, went gopher, literally. Gopher, the gopher wood, right? That's right. And that, there, there is a biblical example that also, and there's many examples of this particular pattern, is that when the children of Israel left, the Egyptians, they left with a high hand. And they also left with all or much of the Egyptians, Egyptians' wealth. Gold, silver, they didn't know what they were going to do with it. They didn't know what all that stuff was for. But they left with a lot of stuff. They left a lot with the, the good amount of gold, silver, precious materials. And what. So uh, my, the idea, of, my big problem is that God is striving with man. God is striving with man for 120 years. 1 Peter 3.20 says, while the ark was being prepared. Now, God isn't going to be striving and condemning at the same time. Right. The, the condemnation began when God said, you know what, you know, Noah, go ahead and build this ark because um, they're, I've been striving, nothing, you know, they're not repenting, they're not uh, doing what I want them to do. So go ahead and start building that ark and start dismantling this, this world that I've created. So one of the top research uh, institutions is ICR, Institute of Creation Research. Um, I wanted to give a couple other perspectives of how long some of these other uh, good uh, creation scientists have come up with. Um, one is 64 years. And this, this idea, like the last idea, is we have a man or a group of men that's doing, building the ark by their own power. They're using their own tools, their own resources, and building this large structure. Um, what ICR has done is they've gone through and, and poured through the scripture and found, um, you know, the, the family members could have been helping, of course, Noah. Um, and also, Noah had many resources. He could have very well hired some people to, to help him. So they come up with a, uh, an idea that a, a, an experienced uh, construction crew of four could, uh, could put up 15 cubic uh, feet of wood per day. And then over the course of, of days and years or whatever, putting up a certain amount, let's say 4,600 uh, cubic feet per year, um, if, and you have the total uh, arc, they, they made an estimate of all the wood, how much volumetric wood it would take to build an arc. Um, it would take 64 years. Okay, so that's less than 100, but it's still a goodly amount of time, 64 years, to build this wooden structure with ancient tools, um, 
in, in a familiar you know type of building atmosphere that we would have today so the next uh, 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 research organization is Answers in Genesis. Um, they are the people who built the, the Ark Encounter. That's, that's right. So they, they uh, um, and if you go to the Ark Encounter, I understand that, that you, you'll hear that it took 55 to 75 years. Um, they come, uh, man does it, once again, man is doing it by his own power, with his own tools. Um, but they, they base their ideas more upon the sun's ages, because the sun's, they understand at least that the sons were married adults when the ark construction began, and they were helping their dad build the ark. So, and there's there's a uh, there's a little bit of detail as far as when certain sons were born, and they're able to and they know well to be of married age, they, you know it'd have to be this amount of time, maybe 20 years, 25 years, what have you. So they're able to deduce not quite 100 years, but it's going to be 55 to 75 years to build the ark. Um, with the sons helping, and Noah, of course, and, and uh, everybody that's available, and uh, that's that's the basis of their uh, of their measurement of time. Now, from a modern day perspective, we of course do stuff by our own power with our own resources. Um, an aircraft carrier uh, typically takes four years to to construct, and that's on the order of the ark size. Yeah, um, like the Nimitz or something like that. That's right. The uh, Mayflower too, um, which is another, I don't think, I believe the Mayflower is as big as the Ark, but it was certainly something that we know of in relatively modern times, if you consider, you know, 400, 500 years ago modern. But with, with the tools that they had at their time, you know, there was no power tools, it was all hand tools, metals, that type of thing, sharpened metals to cut and what have you. Um, that even took uh, two years. Um, using 17th century tools, just a group of researchers getting together and say, hey, let's see really how long it's going to take us to build this heart, to build this Mayflower. And then you have, like we said, Doug said, that that's then uh, two years for the Ark Encounter itself, using the same methodology, trying to figure out how it was that Noah, what Noah had to, as resources to build his Ark. The Ark Encounter took less than two years. Mm -hmm. So even if you say two years, I mean, that's quite a bit. That's, that's several orders of magnitude, or at least right. one, two orders of magnitude different than 100 years. They actually so, uh, uh, tried to do it uh, using hand, hand tools and uh, right. pegs and uh, you know, wooden structures. Of course, the Amish, I think, helped a lot with, with that construction. But you, you saw, saw a lot of that too, didn't you? The, the construction of the ark, you saw the... Yeah, uh, I saw how the, you know, they, how it was built. Um, I didn't pay a lot of attention. I don't build things, but um, I wouldn't... It's interesting that you bring that up, but what was also interesting I saw in the ark is they had a display about um, correcting our idea that we use these ancient tools um, and they mentioned some things that people have heard of, like the Stonehenge, and I'm going to bring up the pyramids. I don't know if they said the pyramids or not, but the idea of, you know, thousands of years ago, they were doing some amazing accomplishments. Right. Yeah. So I right. thought that was interesting, and when you were saying what you were saying, it makes right. me think, well, of course, they didn't have the power tools. Well, if right. you live but almost a thousand years uh, like they did back then, you would expect that they had some technology. Right. I don't know how, uh, uh, I just remember in my past surfing the web or what have you, being curious about different things that they suspect, I don't know how, uh, if it's, I don't have a, I can't cite a reference, but they, they have definitely found uh, ancient nuclear reactors, I mean, where they found some uranium and they learned that they moved their uranium around, they can kind of, uh, you know, uh, oh, wow. they, can, they can make the heat they can regulate the heat to be able to do things. Oh, never and also, they looked at the structure of some of the pyramids and some of the strange tubing and strange um, porting inside the, inside the pyramids. And some of the same chemical traces <laughs> imply that they may have had electric lights in the pyramids. I, once again, oh, okay. I don't know. It's, it, it's, uh, I don't know. I can't cite any references on that. But I, I do concur with the idea that we weren't dealing with people that were ancient or decrepit or, or, or <laughs> ignorant by any sense mm -hmm. of the imagination. Um, so, and in fact, 
Uh, yes. You have a, a creation function, yes. uh, and you have your own ideas of how Right. So, well, the creation function is, a, is something that I discovered uh, over 10 years ago. And it's a mathematical function that's de de defined by scripture that describes the creation. And the creation function, uh, it, it produces a logarithmic spiral pattern that makes seven full rotations. Um, so if you can imagine a spiral that has several, several loops, well that's a mathematical pattern if you graph it. And uh, we know, we hear that, or the Bible tells us that the earth was created in seven days. Well, we can understand from using the spiral pattern that maybe those seven days actually represent seven rotations of creation, which is actually a rotation of the earth, which was the focus of oh, creation. Okay is a day. That's, that's the best way that you can define a day, one rotation of the earth. Well, God was focusing on the earth. He rotated his creation seven times. Now, if you graph out that mathematical, that logarithmic pattern, it, it creates a, ta a table of numbers, which I found strongly correlates to the periodic table of the elements in the Fibonacci series, which is a well-known um, uh, phenomena in, in, in nature. Uh, you see the Fibonacci series numbers in all plant life and everything around us. Um, so this creation function is something that I've been able to uh, uh, I, I've been able to take this function and find a lot of patterns in the Bible that that follow this creation function numerically because it produces this table of numbers, which the ta you can't help it, but the the numbers are in the Bible, the same numbers that are in this table. Well, from this, um, uh, I was able to come up with an idea that the ark could be done in 46 days. Now that sound may sound ridiculous to everybody, which it was ridiculous, to kind of funny to me when I first looked at that, but let me explain. It's very, it's very, it can, it's very interesting. The ark would take 46 days if, if to build, if eight people put up one ark frame a day. You could think of the ark was 300 cubits long, and one frame being one cubit frame, like if the ark was a loaf of bread, one slice of bread a day. So they have 300 of these. And then of course there's additional wood that's needed to fill in the, the walls and the different uh, areas and sections for all the different animals. Okay, in this case, and you can remember earlier in the, uh, in the show, I kept on saying man uses his own power. In this case, Noah uses his faith. He's a, a Hebrews 11 Hall of Faith member. Okay, and we read from uh, Hebrews 1 or 11.1, Faith is substance. According to God, faith is substance. And I truly believe that myself. And the pre-flood earth, and remember that the pre-flood earth was the earth that God spoke into existence in seven days. Okay, so an, an earth can be made in seven days. Certainly an ark can be built in 46 days when you do what God commands. And my big point here is when can you think of an example in the Bible when a person, when God spoke to a person and told that person to do something, they did it exactly and a miracle did not result? Feeding of the 5,000. It, it's an it's a, a awesome, auspicious miracle because somebody listened to God. Somebody listened to Christ. Water from a rock. The parting of the Red Sea. They could have built a boat and crossed the Red Sea. But no, somebody listened to God. No, uh, Moses listened to God. And look what happened. Water to wine. Uh, some, uh, the uh, disciples listened to Christ, fills six jars with water, you know, served the, uh, the head of the, the, the wedding, and, and, you know, they did what God said, and a miracle resulted. Coin from fish's, a fish's mouth. You know, go cast a line into the sea, and the first fish you catch is going to have a coin in its mouth. I mean, what kind of, you know, if you listen to God, miracles result. So, so well, you're, you're thinking... Uh, that uh, God, Noah used miracles to create the ark. Right, right. It's more than that. Um, there's, there's a little couple more points here that I want to make here. Sound, sound then was like electromagnetism is now. Right now, electromagnetism is our communication medium for radio, TV, the internet. Back before the flood, sound was uh, speech was universal. Things were spoken into existence before the flood. Um, you can look at uh, Cain's strange conversation with God, speaking his own punishment. I mean, if, something, if somebody said something, it was done. And that's why it was so easy for the world to fall into such violence and chaos is because the pre-flood, because of what the evil speech people were, uh, were saying. 
So from the creation function, um, you can, if you have a, a 50 by 30 uh, cubital frame, it would take 251 cubits of wood to, to build one arc frame. And from my creation function, you have some familiar numbers. But if you, if you take the end of the sixth day, you get a number uh, 616. So if you subtract the 251 cubits from the 616, you get this access point of 365. And that's going to be a common theme number because also the arc volume being 300 long, uh, 50 wide, and 30 tall is 450,000 cubital elements. If you fill the arc, arc up halfway, like I think it was because the water line was at 15 cubits, um, your Archimedes, Archimedes volume would be 225,000. If you divide that by the, the creation function day six number of 616, you get, once again, you get 365 frames worth of wood. 300 for the heart construction itself or its length, 65 additional frames worth of wood to fill in for the arc, for the walls and stuff. Also, my idea of 46 days to build the arc fits in with all the other time frames of the flood. 150 days, 73 days, 90 days, 57 days. Also, here's an interesting point. John 2.20, how long did it take to build Herod's temple? 46 years. And Christ, the idea was Christ saying, it took 46 years, I'm going to raise it up in three days. Once again, we got Christ talking about building a temple, a very large building in three days. Okay, so we're talking about days. It takes days for God to do things, not hundreds of years. I believe the Ark Assembly began on the first day of the first year. I used Noah's age as given by the Bible. He was 600. If you started building on the first day of the year, and it took 46 days, guess what happened day 47? That's the day that the, ark, the flood started. So the ark was finished and filled and ready to go the day before the flood began on the 47th day of that year. No, well, that's really... Uh, that's, that's a good one right there, isn't it? That's a good one. That one uh, raised, put goosebumps on my arm when I, when I discovered that one. And there's, but there's more. There's more to this. There's also the, uh, what I call the ark body model, which I, the ark is a temple. Know ye not that your body is a temple of God. So the ark has aspects to it that resemble the human body. So if you take the 47 days to build and fill the ark, plus the 50 days of God's perspective of the flood, plus 73 days of first drying process, you get 270 days. And 270 days is also nine months, which is the gestation period of a human fetus, which we're talking about the ark being, and lots and lots of examples on previous shows of how the ark is very similar to the human body. Here's another one. When the ark was born, nine months after 270 days, when the the hard, the hard part of the flood was over. Also, uh, on the uh, a date given um, was the when the tops of the mountains were seen, as if when the ark was coming forth, you could see the head of the baby as it's being delivered, just like the tops of the mountains would be seen. Labor begins. Noah removes, removes the covering of the ark on the first day of the first month of the following year. And uh, so this idea of um, the ark being born, or the earth being born from the flood is not unusual because Romans 8.22 says the whole creation travaileth. And uh, then God, even though Noah may have seen the ark, the, the earth was dry, when he wanted to come out, it wasn't until 57 days later that the ark was actually, or the earth was actually dry. So that's my, uh, that's my spiel. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, well, we'll, we'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution. We hope you enjoyed our show.